Hey everyone, this is Karthik, and we are going to solve the problem C1 and C2 of Code Forces round 889. Uh, it's quite an interesting problem. So, what I would recommend you to is pause the video, read the problem on your own, and anyway, I'll be explaining it. So, you have an array A1, A2, so on till AN. Your goal is to make the array non decreasing with certain constraints. And for making it non decreasing, you can perform one type of operation in which you will select any two elements of the array, i and j, and then replace the ith element with whatever was the ith element plus the jth element. So this is the replacement that you can do to the elements. You can perform this operations operation at most 31 times for the hard version of the problem and at most 50 times for the easy version of the problem. Now the idea here is that the numbers are going to be the array size is going to be less than equal to 20 and each element individually is going to be maximum as big as 20 or as small as minus 20. Now given these constraints think about trying to solve the problem think of some solutions think what you can do to make it happen in less than 31 or 50 operations. I will give you one example from here so that we all know that we are on the same page and we understand the problem well. You have the array 1, 2, minus 10 and 3. Uh, this array is not a non-decreasing array because minus 10 is less than 2. It should be either equal to 2 or greater than 2. Now what I can do is I can make this 3 to 6 by selecting 4th element and 4th element and my array becomes Now again what I can do is I can make this 6 as 12 by again selecting 4 comma 4. Now what I can do is I can add 12 to minus 10 making it 2 by selecting the third element and fourth element. And if you see my array is non decreasing now. All the element is either greater than the previous element or equal to the previous element. And I did it in using three operations. I was allowed 31. So this is the gist of the problem. Now let's move to the solution. So if you think about it, let's try solving it, assuming all numbers are only positive. Let's see if we can solve that easier version of the problem. So I have my numbers A1, A2. And since uh, the more, the larger the size of the array, the harder it will be to make it non-decreasing, I'll just assume it to be 20 elements. And I want to do, uh, make it non-decreasing in using at most 31 operations. Assume all these numbers are all positive numbers. So to ensure that A2 is greater than A1, what I can do is simply make A2 as A1 plus A2. And I am guaranteed to have that this number is either greater than or equal to A1. Yeah, either greater than it or equal to it because A2 could be 0, but it will definitely not be smaller than A1. Similarly, A3 should be greater than this number. So what I can do is I can make A3 as A1 plus A2 plus A3 by selecting the second and third index. And I believe you get the idea for A4, I'll add this to A4 and it will become A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. For A20, I will add all the first 19 numbers by adding the 19th existing number to A20 and I am good. So if I keep doing this for 20 elements, I will use up only 19 operations, which is less than 31. So that's great. I can do, I can solve the problem if all the numbers were positive in at most 19 operations. In fact, if all the numbers were positive or zero, now let's uh, try to solve what if all the numbers were negative. Let's see how it goes. So it's still as you know, A1, A2, A3, so on to be positive numbers, but I'll add a minus sign in front of them. Now what I want to ensure is that minus A20 is the least negative number or the um, smallest number with a minus sign. So what I'll do is, Whatever is A20, I'll keep it as it is. But to make sure that A19 is less than A20, I will select the 19th and the 20th index and make A19 as minus A19 plus A20, taking the minus sign common. 
So this number is definitely going to be more negative than A20. Similarly for A18, I'll add this thing to A18 and that will make it A of 18 plus A of 19 plus A of 20. This is going to be definitely more negative than this number. So if you see, my array is going to become something of this sort, non-decreasing. This will be the largest number, a bit smaller than that, more smaller than that, and that way onwards till A1. Finally, A1 will become minus A1 plus A2 plus A3, so on to A20. And this will also take me only 19 operations. So if my numbers, unless there is there are both positive and negative numbers, I can solve the problem using 19 operations. Now let's see what happens if I have both negative and positive numbers. So what we're going to do is, if you have both positive and negative numbers, I will still try to make either the entire array having only positive numbers and zeros or the entire array having only negative numbers and zeros, but not both. For doing that, since I can do at most 31 operations and the algorithm that I have allows me to do 19 operations, given that the array is either positive or negative, I am allowed to have another 12 operations to make the array of only a single type of elements. So I am allowed to have 12 operations to either make all negative numbers as zeros or plus or positives or the other way. So let's see how we can do it. Ideally, what I will need to prove you is that it's always possible. First, let's go towards an intuition. So my array will have one number as AL positive. So there's going to be one number that is the largest positive number and there's going to be one number that is the largest negative number. Now, if I were to go ahead and make all the numbers as positive, let's say I want to make either all numbers as zeros or positives, I would take AL plus and there's an inherent observation uh, assumption here that al plus 1 is in fact greater than al minus in the absolute values. So mod of this, assume that mod of this is greater than mod of this. Then what I will need to do is to every negative number, I will need to add al plus 1. And let's say there are x negative numbers in the array. I can do it in x operations because just add this number and you're good. The number will either become a 0 or it will become positive, which is great. Then I can use 19 operations. So it's going to be 19 plus x. But the thing here is that 19 plus x can actually be greater than 31 because what if there are more than 12 negative numbers? In that case, it's likely a good option to make all the numbers negative because if there are more than 12 negative numbers, I will try to make all the positive numbers as the negative ones. Only problem here is that while I was making this x, I assumed that AL plus was greater than or equal to AL minus, which may not always be true. So let's say that's not true. What we'll do is we'll try out both the ways. We will be trying out what is the number of, uh, what is the cost of converting everything to positive and what is the cost of converting everything to negative. Let's see what is the cost of converting everything to positive. First of all, AL plus should become greater than or equal to the mod of this should become greater than or equal to AL minus. How can that happen? This guy can be in the worst case. It could be 1, while this could be minus 20. This is the worst case scenario when I'm trying to make everything positive. And since I need this to be true, this is the worst case scenario. So what I'll have to do is I will make 1 as 2, then 4 by adding it to itself, 8, 16, and then 32. One operation, two operation, three operation, four and five. So I can do five operations and definitely make AL positive greater than or equal to AL negative in the absolute terms. And after that, all it requires is five operations like this plus X operations to make all the negative numbers. And I'm good. Then I can use 19 operations to solve the problem. Only issue is that X now can no longer be greater than seven because I am only allowed 12 extra operations other than the 19 that I will definitely do. So this five plus X 
there can be no more than seven negative numbers. What happens if there are more than seven negative numbers? So in that case, your cost of making it all negative will actually be lower. Let's take the same case where we were getting this higher cost. If this were the scenario and you had, let's say eight negative numbers. So negative numbers are eight, then obviously positive numbers are 12. What you can do is you can convert all these 12 numbers in 12 attempts because your largest positive number is one. Now your largest negative number, if it is even minus one, you will just need 12 attempts to make everything a zero and you're good because only 12 operations are required and you can prove that either you can convert everything to positive and zeros or negative and zeros in less than equal to 12 operations and that that's your proof now all that's left is to implement this problem i will upload this video so that you have the solution and then once the system testing is complete, I will write down the solution, submit it and also include a link to that submission. Hope this video helped you and if you have any questions, leave that in the comments. If I get, let's say 200 likes on this video, I'll also make a video solution for the D problem. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe. Bye bye.